Bon dia, alegria. Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal show live stream and the podcast. How are you this morning? Well, quite honestly, I'm a little worse for wear. Um, Johnny Cocktail's in town and um, not many people can say this. Um, I tried a Munson last night. Uh, more, We'll leave that hanging. Uh, we'll leave that hanging there um, because more to come on that in the following weeks and months. But very excited, delighted and proud to say there is now, well, there will be a cocktail revealed called the Munson. So that everybody around the world can sip a Munson first thing in the morning, if they if they so choose. Right, how are you doing this morning? We have a, hopefully a happy hump day, and who doesn't like a happy hump day? Uh, for you this morning, we've got Raquel from Lighthouse Consulting joining us, and we've got Jackie, of course, as well from Expat Portugal. Pete's in. Coach Turner is in, and James as well. So if you're in the if you're if you're tuned into the show, as I know a few of you are, please say hello, especially if you haven't done so before, and. Uh, I'm going to keep pushing. <laughs> oh, Dougie, don't be like that. Um, I thought you'd be the first to join at the, at the front of the queue for a sip on a Munson. Um, Eo, he says, Dougie, see you at the weekend. And lots of love to you, uh, my friend and your family. Um, and we'll uh, we'll carry on with our second episode of our podcast uh, over the weekend. Not on Friday, uh, but some, well, probably I think it was Sunday night we decided, wasn't it? So I'll see you then. Big hug to you, mate. And um, yes, we've got uh, Jackie. We've got Raquel. And it's the return of the Cockerel's Coop this morning. And I'm going to keep mentioning this uh, because, some, you know, people join the show at different times of uh, the uh, 90 minutes that we're on. The Cockerel's Coop is like the Shark Tank, the Dragon's Den, and it is a chance to either uh, promote your own business if you'd like to do that. And it may be an existing business and you just want to come on and talk about it. And with the help of the Gumpers, uh, we, if you want some constructive uh, feedback or some ideas from a, a potential audience, we can do that for you. If you've got an idea uh, that you would like to launch and you'd like a little bit of feedback, we can do that too on the Cockerel's Coop. And if you're not a business owner or if you haven't got an idea that you're thinking about that you'd like to launch, how about promoting, supporting an existing business, one of your favorite businesses in your, well, in this country, in your area, uh, that you would like to promote. Uh, for me, it will be uh, Palmeira, which I may talk about more this morning because uh, we'll be with Nelson. And there's quite a few, it's quite the lineup of stars uh, this lunchtime. A few people have been in touch with me saying, oh, is your meetup still on? Some very lovely people, I think, will be converging at the said Palmeira restaurant with uh, Nelson between one and three. A great Portugal club last night, and then um, quite a lot of um, Portuguese chicken um, with a Brazilian twist. Um, and plenty of uh, cocktails and wine thereafter. I had the um, an Alvarino, I think, um, with the uh, barbecue chicken last night, which was very good indeed. And it's certainly something I couldn't do every school night, I can tell you. Um, looking for glassware this morning to have my water. Um, that, <laughs> that's, that's what I could find of this morning. My fin de seculo. A brandy glass. It looked like a proper lush uh, this morning. Don't I? What do you mean? This morning? Okay. Uh, let's see who's uh, joining us. We've got Dougie, we've got Pete, and uh, let's see what uh, what time James was in this morning. Uh, 7.48, excellent. Bon dia, Gumpers. Feliz carta todos. Como va todos from James there. Yes, and we are we are upping upping the, um, well, the, 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 the um, 
effort, I think, on learning Portuguese. We've launched our T-shirt this week, of course, which um, if you walk into an establishment, uh, showing your L plate and your intention. Podemos falar português devagar, por favor. Um, I think this will do a lot to help you learn Portuguese, uh, urging the person in front of you to speak Portuguese with you, albeit slowly. And I think we're going to start a Tuesday evening class as well. Um, for the Portugal club that we were talking about last night. So looking forward to that and a mindful moment here then from James. New beginnings. Let me just, um, as lovely as she is, let me just take that lady off the screen and put uh, my border back on. There you go. A mindful moment then from James. New beginnings are often disguised as painful endings. Mm. Nobody likes a painful ending first thing in the morning, I, I don't think. Uh, more on that. If you need help with the issues raised this morning or with painful endings and new beginnings, tune in next Monday. Well, of course, I'll be back with some mindful migration uh, matters with James. New beginnings often disguised as painful endings. There is a, um, I think there's definitely a mindful migration um, aspect to that, isn't there? Um, right there. And a mindful dad joke. What does the Freudian monk chant? While meditating. Mom. Very good. Uh, the Oedipal monk right there. And some visuals from James as well. What have we got this morning? Ah, apparently this is what you look like when you emerge from deep meditation. Um, I, <laughs> I can't say I look or feel like, well, I have done, but it's not guaranteed every time. That's from some memes from that meditation guy. Let me take your comment off the screen there, James, and we'll see that a little bit better. Oh, a little pussycat. Um, and now in, in the company of cats, uh, more often than I would probably want to be or have ever been in my life, um, and it was quite the pet day yesterday, Jimmy Chu um, decided to go for a little walk around town, um, unsupervised on his own, uh, which caused the um, GNR to give us a visit um, yesterday to alert us to that fact. It's quite the surprise for Mrs. M, I have to say, to have two squad cars outside, all for a dog. Good policing. Thank you very much, uh, GNR, for, to, for taking care of, um, of uh, the well-being of our dog who popped out to town. He was probably looking for some grilled chicken as well. But there you go. Um, yet with cats, it's amazing the amount of time they sleep. And I wonder what a human being would be like, what they would look like if they spent as much time snoozing and napping as cats do. So there you go. That's um, half of um, James's uh, memory this morning. Where's the other one? Oh, here we go. Um, be before calculators, people used an abacus. That is truly awful. Thank you very much for that this morning, kind of. Um, James there. <laughs> He doesn't spend his day sleeping. He spends his day combing the internet for, for memes for us. Michael Barton is here. And you know what's going to happen next, don't you? Because Michael Barton's here. Bon dia, Gumpers. We, uh, who was it yesterday? Who was it who joined us and, and gave that a little go? I think it was Mama Bear McGowan, wasn't she? So we can lift that from the show. And we invite you um, to send us your... Hola, bon dia, Portugal. Shouted from your rooftop on 913-590-303. Here's Michael for you. Bom dia, Portugal! Still loving the echo on that. 913-590-303 if you'd like to share yours with us. Um, thank you very much then for the mindful moment and the mindful dad joke and the memes, James. Coach Turner, bom dia, Gumpers. Como estás? Bom, eu espero... A day of relative calm today. Oh, wouldn't that be lovely? A day of relative calm today. Thank goodness. Yes, okay. I think there are a lot of springtime vibes in the air at the moment. Two heavy nights in a row and I'm wiped out. Still, it was fun. You and me both are there, Coach Turner. God's got tip of the day then. Continuing the theme of building your own community, but combined with fitness, how about joining a sports club? I met Mrs. T. I didn't know that. I met Mrs. T at our running club, as well as many of my friends. Excellent. And my late dad, says Coach Turner, had many friends in his golf club who helped him, off, who helped him after mum died. However, not all clubs are sociable, um, so you'll need to do some research first. Yes, I guess there are some clubs are more sociable than others. Um, me meditation club, going back to meditation. Yeah, I guess, you know, after the meditation, people are a bit more sociable than sitting in a room together, not saying anything at all with their eyes closed. Uh, most will have a tryout session. That's quite a good, a nice bit of research, isn't it? You could meet loads of friends even without joining a club. Um, if you go and sample a few. So you should be able to try, says Coach Turner, without any commitment. Just find some something you fancy trying. Excellent advice there. Thank you, Coach Turner. We are into hump day with excellent um, insight, advice, tips from Coach Turner every week. 
uh, halfway through this week now on the 20th of March. I always find joining the local... No, I thought he was going to say fishing, and I'm not going to be reading that out, Pete. You nearly got me there. Uh, widens the circle, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and that EU was not for me. I think that may well have been for Peter there. And Erica, wow. So was that go SMDP GNR? Absolutely right. Um, after we discover what it's about. Do you remember the first time they came to the house? It was when one of the cats that, well, the cat that I am the official owner of, that I never imagined that would be happening. It was when she turned up that the GNR were first at our house because our, our neighbor very helpfully said, well, we'll get the GNR to come round um, with their scanner to see if she's got an owner. And they did that as well. They came round with the scanner. However, I did suspect that they'd called in at a local Chinese shop and bought a shower head because that's what it looked like. I thought they'd invested a euro in a shower head and just made it look like they were scanning the cat with this piece of plastic. And like, nope, nope, no, 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 there's no owner. It, the cat's all yours, basically. Um, another good day's policing there. And uh, that was, I think that was three police officers who came with the plastic shower head for that. Okay, Erica, good to see you. And uh, yes, you're reminding me, a lovely conversation going on over there about amazing women in Portugal at the Portugal Club. And there was a lovely um, a saying of the day um, at um, gmpvip.com that I want to share with you. Oh, um, you've been busy over there this morning, some of you already. Um, today's Portuguese saying of the day, and there are hundreds of them over there now, mainly, well, started off by T Duck. And good, that good work continued by Antonio F. Who's here now? Look, bon dia todos, um, says Antonio F. And um, over at uh, the Portugal Club, let me just bring it onto the screen. The latest in a long line of Portuguese sayings is, the, which one am I looking at here? Oh, this one, I think. Yes, here we go. This, this will be lovely. If you fancy getting, you know, sometimes when you go to a Portuguese shopping mall, and there is the Portugal Club in dark mode, everybody. You can do that in dark mode. Now, good work. And um, that's the team over there at school.com who provide the uh, technology for our, our club over there. Um, that's in dark mode there, which I think is rather fetching. Um, if you fancy getting an Azalasia made, which you can at uh, shopping malls here in Portugal, maybe you would like this one. E bem vindo, quem vier por bem. Whoever comes for good is welcome. How lovely to have that outside your window uh, or your front door. And um, uh, uh, let's have a look at a couple more. A bem casada e que não tem sogra nem cunhada. A woman is well married if she has no mother-in-law or sister-in-law. With additional commentary by Antonio, I guess because there'll be no woman to take her husband's side. To take her husband's side in an argument. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, yes, of course. I was thinking of the other way around. The man. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Antonio F. And one more then for you. Um, aqui now. Oh, that was Ima, wasn't it? I, uh, apparently, Ima's, um, or allegedly, I should say, Ima's uh, motto. Um, aqui now, uh, aqui now há ninguém que possa ajudar você. A Brazilian translation there, I think Antonio F. is saying. But the point being, there is no one here who can help you. I don't think that's their motto. I just think that's a temporary situation. Well, hopefully it's a temporary situation. And just one more for you. É bastante rico quem nada deve. It's quiet, very rich. Yes, they are rich who owe nothing. Very good, some Portuguese wisdom right there. So thank you very much for your continued service over there. What a wonderful community we have. Coach Turner um, with his wonderful contributions and Antonio F there with his wonderful contributions of Portuguese sayings of the day. And look, talking of wonderful contributions, Tia Filomena is here. You're back in the country, Filomena. Yes, I think so. Boa, boa carta feira a todos uh, from Filomena. And look who's here as well. Good day, Carlito. And I'm, I'm assuming, Filomena, you got back safely from the Azores and had a fabulous time over there. Good day, Carlito. Happy Persian New Year to the GMP crew. Well, there's another reason to celebrate. It's been quite the run of things, isn't it? St. Patrick's last Sunday. And now, may we drink to celebrate? What's traditional to do um, for Happy Persian New Year? Um, FD, Frank, uh, let us know if you will. And see you as well, absolutely. Steve, looking forward. You're one of the uh, stars in the constellation that will be the meetup a little bit later on. See you later, Carl, says Steve from Home Miners Property Investment. And I'd like to give you a little bit of a tour as well. If you've got time, Steve, a little bit of a tour around San Martino de Porto as well. Um, so see you later on. And Nubianet, all our lovely people, uh, thank you for being here this morning. 
Right. Have you? So for those of you who've just joined, what I'm looking for this morning, if you haven't got a business of your own that you want to promote um, or a business idea that you would like to get some feedback on, have you got a local business in your area that you would like to promote? Let's um, let's give the, the moms and pops and the local stores it might be a market. It might just not be one business. It might be a collection of markets and a particular local retail experience that isn't one of the big companies that seem to be dominating our wallets, purses, and um, landscape. Um, shout out for the local businesses. So do please, if you can, maybe send, send us a link as well as a little bit of detail about a company, um, an organization that you would like to recommend in your area. JP also in with a better late than never. We don't keep, we don't keep track of people's timekeeping here, JP. We're just glad of you being here. And, and a few people glad to see you, Frank. No man cave uh, capital letters just yet, but uh, bon dia, Frank, uh, to you, Frank, from Antonio F. this morning. Okay, Raquel to come. And uh, we've got Jackie uh, to come as well from Expats Portugal. Uh, let's have a look at the news headlines before they join us then uh, over at the English-speaking news outlets, the Portugal News and the Portugal Resident. And you may have noticed if you stayed to the end of the show yesterday, I got very excited about the number of UFOs um, that are being spotted um, here in Portugal. It's on the increase. And that amazing video that I played of the fireball brighter than the full moon passing over Portugal a couple of days ago as well. Quite the amazing video if you've got time to look at that. I have posted that up um, over at our own homepage. Actually, let's have a look at that as well. That might be a good place to start this morning. In case you didn't know, um, goodmorningportugal.com. I cherry pick stories, um, both local um, and international and sometimes global that I think may be of interest, interest to you. A little bit of a curation for Gumpers on our website. If you haven't been there for a while, you might like to check it out. All the W's, goodmorningportugal.com. And uh, this is what you'll see on arrival over there. Um, that's our homepage. There you go. Um, and a click through to joining or helping us, supporting us uh, by joining the Portugal Club there. Our video, me and Bobby, with the ten episode one of an Englishman and Irishman walk into a bar, the tender octopus and dark secret about cod episode, the first episode that you can watch there, and the news. Then there you go. There's that fireball, Mumba Bear's book that she was talking about yesterday. Don't forget the new Central Portugal meetup. That's this coming Saturday uh, with Sue's um, in Central Portugal at Ofiga Preta, and of course, look our initiative to um, get people speaking more P Portuguese with the T-shirt and something, I think, that Erica, with the open source design that I've created there, will be turning into a badge and not a T-shirt. You can have a baseball cap, of course, or underpants if you're especially um, adventurous or creative with that. And the homepage, if you would like a neat way to listen to the podcast, all the latest episodes are on the, on the player there, the podcast player on the homepage as well. And so much other stuff that you can click through to. Um, on the homepage there. So there you go, goodmorningportugal.com. Let's go back to the English-speaking newspapers as, as we wait for the arrival of Raquel at 9 and Jack at around 9.30 this morning. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I think we've got a recommendation there for a business uh, or a market there from Pete. We'll come back to that. And the Squire of the Shires is in. Morning, Squire. Good to see you um, here this morning. Um, oh, good. Okay. And a bit of chat between Michael Barton Oh, dear. Uh, Michael Barton and uh, Philomena there. Thank you very much for those. Keep them coming. Those recommendations for the Cockerell's Coop. Uh, for the time being, we're going to go over and have a look at the Portugal resident first uh, this morning because we started with the Portugal news yesterday. What's this? Big football stadium on the virtual front page of the Portugal resident. What's this story then? Um, let's jump in and take a look and see what they're talking about over there. Big three stadiums to host 2030 World Cup matches. Never mind about the World Cup. Well, I mean, great. We've got the World Cup, it looks like um, Portugal are getting involved. But what about the Olympics? And as I said before, when I was a kid, if in an Olympic year, every can of Coke, every petrol station would have some mention of the Olympics, right? At the beginning of the year, working its way up, fluffing for the Olympics um, that would be happening in the summer. I'm not, I'm not seeing anything about the Olympics this year. And we've got a major football tournament and we've got a carnation revolution to celebrate. It's as though there are too many things uh, that, that are happening this year and there's too much to be squashed into the um, public spotlight. Anyone else notice that? Um, this absence of uh, any coverage of the Olympic Games, which I believe are in, in France, in Paris, 
uh, this year, which might include the 100 meter dash from the riot police if things are continuing, as I've seen recently um, in Paris. Okay, this this then big three stadiums to host the 2030 World Cup matches. I think that'll be good news for the likes of Frank, for example. Benfica, a bit of um, World Cup action in 2030. Benfica, FC Porto and Sporting Stadiums, as you might expect. Selected to host World Cup matches, the Luge Dragon and Al Valade Stadiums, uh, respectively their home to Portugal's big three, have been unsurprisingly confirmed as the Portuguese venues of the 2030 FIFA World Cup. So there you go. Other cheerful news uh, on the Portugal resident, euthanasia in Portugal, ombudsman wants law decriminalising assisted death declared unconstitutional. OK, so that that is running and running. Um, Tavira in uproar. Oh, Tavira in uproar over controversial mobility plan and a creative water saving campaign targets Algarve tourists and latest PJ Mega Swoop targets well-known businessman a TVI journalist. Nothing I want to click through just yet. If you've got a new story you'd like me to have a look at that I'm not seeing here, then do let me know. And of course, that story of UFO sightings over Portugal on the increase and mortgage rates, as well as meteorites falling onto Portugal. Mortgage rates also falling. See what I did there for the first time in two years. Actually, looking at some of those headlines, pretty grim, actually, at the moment over there on the Portugal resident Cheered up only by sweets, cakes and Easter fun in Alcultin with that lovely uh, grandma there with a uh, array of confection. That looks fantastic. Let's head to Alcultin, shall we, uh, for the sweets, cakes and Easter fun. I'm sure we'll be talking to Jackie about cakes a little bit later on. I think she quite liked the, instead of a pub crawl, a bakery crawl. Um, let's have a look, which is so easy to do, of course, here in Portugal. Let's have a look at the Portugal news and see what it's saying. Um, as we await the arrival of Raquel, who can, of course, help you start a business here in Portugal. She'll be with us on the 27th at the Storytellers Palace. Um, and I think she's got a, a masterclass workshop coming up of her own. And she may be promoting one or two of her businesses that she's helped uh, launch here in Portugal as well. Um, before she joins us, let me bring onto the screen the Portugal News and a quick scan of their headlines uh, this morning. What are they saying over there? Let me show you as well. Um, as me taking a look at it. There we go. Um, there's the PortugalNews.com. And uh, yeah, the fireball story. 10,000 patients treated at home. The government has stated that in 2023, for the first time, more than 10,000 patients were treated at home. That's really nice, isn't it? Quite old-fashioned uh, when the doctor turns up with their little briefcase. Actually, no, not little, is it? It's one of those lovely, great big doctor's concertina briefcases uh, full of booze probably, knowing doctors as I do, um, rules and some medication for patients as well, of course. Uh, rules suspended to allow property sales to proceed. That might be good news, a uh, sort of thing that uh, Steve uh, may well be talking about this lunchtime. Uh, come and talk to him at the meetup this lunchtime if you're interested in investing in Central Portugal. Steve from Property Miners will be joining us. 7%, look at this. Talking of mom and pop businesses, this isn't 7% of Portuguese work in shopping centres. That's a huge amount of the population and perhaps not the direction of travel um, we're looking for, or at least a bit of balance. Uh, we want to be supporting with the Cockerell's Coop local traders. And, and as much as I like a, a Portuguese shopping malls, um, they tend to be full of chains, don't they, and not the independents. There's a new Algarve hiking route for, uh, for those of you who like that sort of thing, and developing a new story there, developing the gaming industry in Portugal, and discovering again last night when we were in the chicken shop that a lot of young Portuguese learn their English from gaming. And we were talking to an amazing young man last night, Afonso, who plays a um, an online version, or a game based on, a team game based on the Salem Witch Trials. Um, again, which sounds rather uh, cheerful, not, uh, but that's how a lot of uh, young Portuguese people are learning how to speak English. Could we reverse engineer that and all become gamers and work with... I don't think so. I think it would be... If we if we have to learn how to play Grand Theft Auto and speak Portuguese at the same time, I think that might be a little bit too difficult for some of the gumpers here. No disrespect intended there. We might stick to a more conventional approach. Um, new dinosaur species discovered in Portugal. And not all the retirees who are coming here, I, I suspect... Um, new dinosaur species discovered in Portugal. Um, that's a, a, a very rich theme, um, pun absolutely intended for any dinosaur fans. They, dinosaur prints and bones and theme parks seem to be very plentiful 
uh, here in Portugal. Uh, what else are we looking at uh, over at the Portugal News this morning? A wet weather warning. And uh, yeah, they're, they're recovering the fact that mortgage interest rates are falling. And actually, that's going to be our webinar tomorrow night with Mortgage Direct. We'll be talking with Vera. Um, if you're looking to finance a property purchase here in Portugal, you may well be interested in the Expats Portugal webinar tomorrow evening. More about that with Jackie at around 9.30 this morning. And um, 10 million support for water efficiency in hotels. I imagine a lot of water. As well as as well as all the calls, of course, um, in drought-ridden times for us to save water and being thankful of the rain when it rains, there is of course a lot of wastage of water, and uh, that's probably in in the supply system as well as some rather inefficient plumbing around the place as well. So, ten million support then for water efficiency in hotels, and that's probably quite Algarve focused. All right, um, let's go and see if um, Raquel's ready. She's getting ready. She's got a nice coffee there in a very nice mug. Give us a thumbs up, Raquel, if you will, if you're ready to join us on the screen. Okay, let's give her a nice big round of applause after we've said a quick hello um, to to some other people who join us in the chat now. Um, we've got if the aliens ab. Sorry, Raquel. <laughs> Carry on sipping your coffee. If it, if the aliens abduct anyone, tell them to abduct abduct the people that built the showers that are two feet by two feet. Ah, the rather large frame of Steve not fitting into a two foot by two foot shower this morning. A little bit of a complaint there about his accommodation. Jackie, the humble crafter, uh, is in. Bon dia all. And a recommendation for a business. Here we go. That's Matty's Liebscher and Brach therapy, his pain management therapy. Good shout there. And uh, we'll come back to yours, Pete, in a little while. Thank you very much. My Dog Smells is here as well. Um, I don't have insomnia. I just don't want to miss GMP. Bless you, My Dog Smells. Thank you for being here this morning. What time is it for you? And I really enjoyed uh, my last doctor's home visit. He asked who built the houses and even nearly forgot his stethoscope. Um, that sounds like an interesting story, which we can't go into right now, Pete. Um, how it how he got to lose his stethoscope at your house, and um, just mere speculation on where that ended up. Nice big round of applause then for Raquel. Coming up to nine this morning on the twentieth of March. There she is. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, I've got to water glass this morning. I don't know how Portuguese that is. Raquel, how are you this morning? Good. You? Can you hear me? All right. Am I too loud? Yes, please. I've I'm a, got a little bit of a hangover this morning. You're not. <laughs> That's why you said a little bit too loud to me. Okay. Um, yes. Um, How enjoying... about now? Better? No. No, that's fine. Sorry. No, it's, the problem is mine, not yours. <laughs> so, um, yes, a little bit tender this morning after last night's enjoyment. But, yes, as I say, that's my problem, not yours. Um, you're looking fabulous this morning. How are things in Kashkai? Things are great. Uh, looking very good. Actually, I was uh, last week I wasn't here, so I, I had a bit of a vacation. Oh, really? So this week it's like that post-traumatic vacation period where you try to, uh, you know, do everything that you that you couldn't uh, do, do during that week. So I had a lot of catching up to do, but now it's fine. Did you get? May I ask where you where you went? I mean, it's a silly question when people say. Did you, you may go ask. Anywhere? Yeah, did you go anywhere <laughs> nice? I'm like, let's hope so, right? <laughs> it would be it would be the the that would be the the case. It, I went to Iceland. Did you? Can you I tell did. us a bit about that? Why and where? Uh, where in Iceland? <laughs> yeah. I mean, not that and, I know it, one place from another in Iceland, I, and I imagine well, it's. You know, there, it's quite similar. There's not a, a great diversity of experiences in, in Iceland, but I might be wrong. Uh, well, that was what I thought as well. I mean, I didn't know anything. We went a bit, uh, you know, just, okay, we wanted to see the aurora, 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 aurora borealis. Uh, and because this is a great year to see, like in 30 years, this is one of the the best years to see it. And where can we see it? Iceland. Okay, let's go to Iceland. So it was a bit like this. The, <laughs> the thought process behind it was like this. Uh, of course, uh, it's five of us and a two-year-old and a five-year-old. But uh, regardless, we always go a bit on the you know not so conscious side because otherwise you never leave the house any anyway um so and you know we we never have anything planned of course i just i i booked i had booked a cruise to see the aurora of course uh, it, it didn't work out 
But at the end, I had one of the best experiences of my life. And I hope that I can top that one. But it's sure it's going to be difficult because I was talking to my husband the other day and saying, you know, it's it's not that we want to be rich. We want to have quality of life. Yeah, yeah. And what does that mean nowadays? For me, it means time because it's the most important currency. Uh, and and we th began to think about, okay, what would you do if we didn't have to work? So if you had like all day long to do whatever it is that you wanted. And of course the kids have school, so uh, we have to put to do the drop off, the, the pick up and drop offs and all of that. And then I was I was telling him, you know, I I, I did skydiving, I did uh, I did I did diving, um, scuba diving. So I don't know. I was in the air. I was under the ocean. There's not a lot of things that I, I had like a 30 kilo python around me. So I've done a few things. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's a lot. Movie. You you are I... like. You know, is there an action figure available of you? <laughs> there should be the Raquel. The Lighthouse Consulting action figure with a 30 foot, 30 foot python and jumping out of plane. And, and I was probably the only one uh, chasing, you know, after her. Usually people chase, her, they yeah. go away from her. And I was like chasing her the other way around. <laughs> I think she never had that situation. Uh, right. The python must have been thinking, why is that woman chasing me? Yeah. Um, but it was great. I love animals. Uh, and we did the greatest thing i ever did we went dog sledding in an ice cold lake so iceland is like a complete desert okay it's like the moon yeah uh and to me i never realized it but it gave me such a peace and tranquility that i it, it, the visual noise that we have every day is mm -hmm. incredible and then to get to a place where there's a uh, there's nowhere, you know, 360 all around. You don't see anything. It, it's kind of scary, but at the same time, it it kind it's kind of a, a cleansing of a visual yeah. of all the visual mess that you have. And we were driving around. We had a good jeep and all of that because you have to because of the snow and stuff. And then we saw like ten people, and we we're like, "Oh, what's that?" And down down below there was like a frozen lake and then dogs and sledding and sled sleds and me Sled and yeah, sledges, sledges, I guess. sledges. Yeah. and yeah. me and Carolina my oldest were like okay we're going I don't sure. care and and yeah. there were like two or three Brits hanging around because it was closed off it has it had like a fence oh we're not uh we're not supposed to go over there and as good Portuguese that we are we just <laughs> hopped over the fence and we oh, went over it. anyway of course like nothing is going to stop me from going there and doing this okay so then this, this uh, is a fantastic scene already though because wherever yeah. you go in the world there are a few Brits hanging around normally aren't there and they're often from Birmingham in the, in the, <laughs> I of, don't know. Of the UK um and then the Portuguese turn up and like yeah hold my beer we're going in uh, yeah. we come all this we come all this way and we're not going to be stopped by a fence that says don't go in so the, in, in you went with your daughter. Good parenting, showing your, your daughter the way. Because then I, I then I remembered. Oh yeah, right. I have a two year old and a five year old. Okay, so uh, so then right. I was okay. But I have a two year old and a five year old. Is that okay? And the lady was like, uh, Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You'll hold her. And I was okay. So then two days later at ten o'clock in the morning, we were there like my my youngest was like that because she had so many layers she couldn't even move i mean coats and coats and <laughs> ski suits and everything so we only saw like this part of her face and she was like this uh and she was very afraid in the beginning because all the dogs are very excited they they yeah, bark a lot and all of that and i was like and I couldn't even get to the sledge because it's it's a lake okay so you it's like uh, you you can't walk. You just fall. You cannot walk. It's it's so slithery that you cannot walk. So here, she was screaming her heart out. I was just trying to get to the sledge. Oh. But then once we got there, and once we, she saw what was happening, she was like all the way, yeah, yeah, like really enjoying. And then my five year old actually um, led the sledge. So imagine what a great experience, because not a lot of people can say, you know, I've uh, conducted a sledge of dogs in the middle of a, a nice cold lake. No, and of course, not. for the first minutes, I was like looking at the ice and I was like, mm, 
was this a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> like, but then, you know, it was obviously a great idea. Wind. And this is on yeah. this ice desert you're talking about. Um, yeah. this, and I love how you put that, you know, like um, it's almost like um, a visual detox. But um, it is a, eh? a lot of, you know, everything taken out of the landscape. And there you are. And you everything know. white because it snowed yeah. like hell. There was snowstorms. Uh, so everything is white, and this is really, it was really, I, I ended up realizing that it was a very calming factor for me. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, a funny thing, we went to the Blue Lagoon, which 700 people were evacuated from uh, on uh, Friday, I think, and just the day before we were so, there. It, 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 again, is this the sort of, you know, the great spirit of Portuguese discovery is alive and well. You heard that yeah. seven people had been evacuated, so your next no, thought no, was, no. Yeah, Let's go there. Let's go. No, right. no, no. I I knew that Iceland had like 30 active volcanoes, so I thought let's go there. Right, <laughs> but okay. then the evacuation okay. from the Blue yeah. Lagoon happened after we went there. So we were uh we were actually on the plane getting a, a, going to London and the the volcano erupted and everybody was evacuated from the Blue Lagoon. Blue Lagoon. We had just oh, been there like two days before, or one day before, or something like that. So it was great. Incredible. It was good. incredible. You are watching a program about Portugal this morning. I'm having a slight detour via Iceland. I'm <laughs> yeah, so glad we true. did. No, this is amazing. A newbie that's been watching the volcanic progress says, "I love Iceland." Um, I've been twice. Oh. I can't help but say Iceland and think of the uh, frozen food store in the UK, which is not as glamorous as you've just been describing. Although you can get about 100 sausage rolls for a pound. Um, so it does have its benefits, kind of. Um, I've been twice. I know several people from there, says Nubianet. Uh, Pete, of course, has been to Iceland. It is odd, though. This is, Pete is our most prolific world traveller, talking about the Blue Lagoon. Oh, and the Penis Museum, apparently. Didn't go there. <laughs> for you and I, I doubt that that ha had to be evacuated in this or maybe loads of people went there because it was a place of safety i don't know it is odd though all of those corrugated iron buildings the blue lagoon and the penis museum i prefer the north of the island trekking with ponies did you see the cows getting drunk raquel they eat fermented grass <laughs> being let out of their sheds and get quite tipsy no, I'm I, I didn't see the brits cows. and the portuguese if they see that are they going to want to try some of that fermented grass as well to, to make the uh, party no really comment. happy OK, uh, these are our incubating interests. Oh, we'll come back to that because I think that is a business idea. Tell us more, Squire of the Shires. And Nubinet is saying about Iceland, I skipped the Blue Lagoon, probably not literally, but now I regret it. Oh, yeah, so you didn't go there. Um, the houses vary. I've had the benefit of going to people's homes and where they shop. Love the food in Iceland. What, oh, look, and Baddies here, of course, uh, our, our very own uh, Portuguese ambassador. Didn't know you were talking about Iceland. We so are um, this morning, Baddies. Sorry. No, we, I think we've given a pretty good account, or you've given a great account of Iceland this morning. What was the food like? Um, that's all important for the Portuguese uh, person, traveller, isn't it? Yeah, so we did the traditional dish the first day, pizza. Uh, <laughs> Your Icelandic pizza. Of okay, course. excellent. Well done. Yeah. Uh, and then we ended up because you know when you're traveling with children, you have to have snacks. So my my one concern was to you know pack full, be packed full of snacks. Yeah. So we ended up like snacking around all day and then just having dinner. And we went to some street food places. Street food places in Iceland are not on, on the streets; are in house, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they are called street food, and it was great. Eh? Uh, they have a lot of lamb things and. Um, how did it call those little balls? I never know those little balls. I never know how they what they call from chickpeas. What are oh those? falafel? F the falafel, the traditional Icelandic falafel as well. Yeah, see, Very good. so that was about it. Okay. Oh, uh, and uh, on this note of of, um, of of being in Iceland as you were recently, what is my Icelandic name? So can we help? Um, Raquel and family get Icelandic names as well because that is a project Baddy is working on. I'm um, talking about uh, new businesses. There you go. I will translate your name and give you your Icelandic version for free if you like. How about that, Raquel? Please do. Oh, Please, okay. I'd love to know that. How is this going to work, Baddy? Does, does that have to work sort of privately, separately, or can that be done live on air at the moment? 
Um, Depends on the on the result, I think. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. I'll send it to you on the private chat, and you can see if you want to reveal your Icelandic name. Sarah, where you been? Lovely to see you this morning. Bon dia to you. Loads of people here this morning. This is great um, to hear about businesses in, here in Portugal starting them, um, and and your favourite businesses as well, and your business ideas. So I'll go through a few of those. That's uh, so. Thank you very much for that lovely detour via Iceland, and you did get to see the Sorry. aurora borealis. Did you? you saw the northern lights? No. You didn't. <laughs> that was the whole purpose of the journey in the first place. I know we didn't. It was clouded all three days. We booked the cruise. We didn't see it. They gave us another ticket for the, for the following day. It was uh, cancelled. They gave us another ticket for the following day, and it was cancelled again. So I was like, okay, enough already. Uh, we'll go to Denmark or whatever <laughs> in oh. the next few months to see it. Uh, no, the the one thing that we did go there to see, we didn't. But that's wow. fine. You know, I you know. For all the all the, the the other things that I got to experience, that was completely fine. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. Um, Dougie, who who um, watches uh, from Wales, he sent me pictures of the Northern Lights from Wales. So you can have a Welsh um, holiday. I don't know if you've ever been to see? Wales. Have a Welsh no, holiday. no, no. Okay, all right, and and maybe see them from there. So you've got to go back, basically. Uh, bon dia, falafel is not traditionally Icelandic. I need your first name and maybe middle name. Your parents' first names. Nothing else. Oh, okay, only so that. Only those. If you want to send those to us in the private chat, I'll make sure they get to um, to Baddy. Oh, First and Susan's name. great in there as well. And Squire of the Shire, shouting out to uh, Antonio F. this morning. And a question for you, Sarah. We haven't seen you for a while, Sarah Yerman. Uh, have you been traveling, cycling a lot? Um, do let us know. Yeah, I'm gonna, all right. I will send that over to – very good. Very quick there, Raquel. I will send that over privately. Um, to Baddy, and then she may be able to come back, Alice, with uh, your new Icelandic name. Right, business in Portugal. That's what you talk about when you join us. How is everything going? I, I'm guessing you're helping loads more businesses start up, although not last week. Although knowing you, I suspect you might have met somebody at the airport and are now helping them to start a business in Portugal. But tell me, what's going on with you and starting businesses here in Portugal? The funniest thing last week was that I had a video call in the middle of nowhere, literally in the middle of nowhere. Like we were at the desert and I was having a video call, a business video call. And I was like, yeah. this this goes to the books because, you know, having a video call in the middle of a desert in Iceland is, is, is you know, it, it's one from, from, from the books. That's ah, not you, not, not you. Just sorry, you. sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just curious. Um, so I, you know, it's very hard not to work. I try to plan everything to not to have work during this week uh it was difficult i ended up working for a little bit of course but the one that i'm the one thing that i'm excited the most is la the the week previous i you know sometimes i have some some shooting days for my content and social media and such uh, and we had one of those days in the past week. And uh, the planner that I am, I just on the spot thought of something that I'd really like to do. And this is something that I'd really like to talk uh, about today, which is a masterclass for freelancers. Because, you know, I incorporate businesses, but a lot of people don't really want a company or it's not even the best thing for them to have a company, but they want to have a business and they want to register as freelancers. So that's a service that I provide. And it's a very personal service. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. We go, we have like a number of sessions and I go through all the steps with them side by side, explain everything, like do a training on taxes and social security and VAT and all of that stuff. Uh, but then I, I started thinking that that there probably were a lot of people that wanted to register as freelancers, couldn't do it on their own because, again, for total transparency, it is a free service. You don't have to pay anyone to do this. You can do it online for free. Yes. Um, but everyone that I've asked uh, following the, the, the service has been – all of them have told me, no, this is this was great. I could not have done it myself. Uh, and those those clients are my greatest marketing team because I don't have any marketing other than than my own clients because they do the marketing for me. 
but I started realizing that uh, not all, uh, and because it's a very personal one-on-one -on -one session, it's not, uh, it's an expensive one. It's a, it's a really premium service, right? So then I started to think that maybe I could do a different kind of offer and extend that offer for more people, a more uh, approachable offer, let's say, and offer kind of the same service. So I thought about doing a masterclass where I have like four or five stops spots uh, for a more affordable price, but where we do the same service one-on-one, -on -one, but where we're in a team, like four or five people, and we go through all the steps all together uh, and talk about individual situations. Of course, it's not it's not a one-on-one -on -one as it is with a personal session, but I think it's a good way to reach more people that probably are not ready to, to go to the premium version, but still need that help. Well, um, presumably those people working together form some nice bonds as well. I'm sure that would be very exactly. nice little bit of networking there. Yeah, because it's I've I've even introduced clients to one another because I've had like two clients from the music business in the UK that are now either musical agents or DJs or something like that. And I was like, you have to meet this other client that's of mine that's because that's it's great, but much yes. better than doing it alone. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I end I end up and they even created a group. This was fantastic, Carl. They created <laughs> they created a, a group of former cl of clients of mine not former clients clients of mine because we obviously then keep the relationship for like tax doubts in from uk and pt tax doubts and then one of my clients was like well that's great because then we don't need to bother you individually we can bother you we can all bother you on the same spot collectively <laughs> like, yes yes <laughs> Brilliant. But so there's a network there, uh, and there's a confidence, and there's a relationship there, and so I think that probably it, it it would be a good idea to extend that even for people that are not ready for some reason to to or don't have the financial effort to do this the the complete personal one on one session. So I'm gonna try this model. Let's see. I am very hopeful that I can help people that way. And uh, and let's see how how that works. How are these uh, potential freelancers going to get in touch with you? The, I mean, this is would be very useful for the digital nomad wave that Portugal is. Oh experience. yeah, for right. sure, for but sure. How, how do they get in touch with you if they want to do that? Well, I am going to be opening. I'll have a landing page and all of that. I'm going to be opening the registration process probably next week, and then we'll see. Because if this is something that I see that has potential to to be more regular. I would completely be open to have like weekly uh, a weekly session, and everybody could could just uh, register. So I'll I'll promote this on all of my social media, my website, my Facebook, and Instagram, and TikTok because now I have TikTok. Oh Lord, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I'm almost doing a podcast now. I think the podcast uh, is also a good a good format for me. Yeah, because I, can, I cannot shut up, as you can see. Uh, and uh, and I'll let you know, Carl. And just be just be on the lookout because I'll well, give out all the information. Absolutely. Oh, and um, if people want to meet you in real life, you'll be joining us as well yeah. at our next Portugal Club event at the Storytellers Palace here in San Martino de Porto. We do this every fourth Wednesday, and Raquel will be joining us kind of informal right i don't think it's going to be like a powerpoint presentation in the gatsby bar at midday but you'll be on hand right to to chat yes. to people informally about running a business on that day yes uh i w when i do my talks i never want to have like a very structured powerpoint because i want to have conversation starters uh i want to read the room i want to understand the people that are there because it's not about me saying whatever it is that i want to say it's about how can i be useful to the people that are listening to me and so it really depends it depends on the crowd on the audience on on the location on the type of people that are there and so i never like to have a very structured thing i want to have like pointers and then see and like read the room and see the interest and collect questions like i'm always open for questions i know it's like there's no net it's like walking on on a thin line because you know, I, I don't have the safety of preparing everything, but I really enjoy answering questions because a lot of a lot of times I wouldn't come up with that question, right? Because it's a given in my head. 
So it's yes. great to have people asking. And I always say, don't be afraid to ask anything. Don't think that there's a dumb question. There's not. Uh, so ask. Well, I'll be there. Anything. I'll be there to ask all of those. So that's yeah, yeah, no one else. Good, no one good, else needs good. to worry about that. So that's good. the twenty seventh. That's a, a week today. In fact, yeah. <laughs> With my basic grasp of mathematics, I can tell you that it's a week today. Um, that's a you have to RSVP for this. It is a three course lunch, including soft drinks and coffee, uh, twenty five euros, and we have a little bit of a meeting in the Gatsby Bar. Uh, and sometimes we have a little bit of a meeting after in the Gatsby Bar if uh, sometimes that um, if something develops and uh, con the convivial atmosphere. If we're taken away by the convivial atmosphere of the Storytellers Palace. Uh, that can also happen as well. Loads of people I see joining us from Twitter, from X this morning. So good morning to you, if that's where you're viewing the Good Morning Portugal show from. Loads of you um, this morning. And yes, yeah, so, okay, so RSVP to me directly, if you will, uh, for this. And you can find out about uh, more about uh, Raquel's uh, freelancers support service as well uh, at that event next Wednesday. Anything else you need, want to tell us about? And are there any businesses that you look after? Obviously, there are some confidentiality issues when you're working with people, yeah. but some of them might not mind a blast of publicity. Um, that's what we're doing with the Cockerell's Coop here, Raquel. We mm -hmm. want to recommend ind indie businesses, freelancers, mom and pop sort of businesses, local businesses, because the corporates are very capable with their big marketing budgets oh, to do that for themselves. But we want to um, promote other people's businesses, our favorite businesses. For example, we've got um, Philomena. Um, I, we've got a uh, promotion of Philomena from Pete uh, somewhere here this morning. Yeah, but most of all, the wonderful Philomena Pascual, who teaches Portuguese and, of course, she organizes trips. Um, a few of us have been on those wonderful trips, which are so beautifully organized. Uh, she's not just the most amazing teacher, but also a font of knowledge force of nature and has fantastic friends too. So if you're thinking of learning Portuguese from afar and you'd like to do that over Zoom with Philomena, you can do that tripsforbrits at gmail.com. Just get in touch with me if you need the details for that. I would like to promote at least three businesses locally, says Pete. Um, Joao Campo, awesome with his digger. Our local THL shop, I don't know what that is, uh, Fundau, um, buys me lunch and gave me a 101 euro discount just yesterday. What were you buying to get a 101 euro discount, Pete? Was that, was that more digger services? And Fundau, Monday Market, awesome for double entendre vegetables. Who doesn't like a double entendre a rooty vegetable first thing in the morning? Thank you very much for those recommendations. I know, I know that the Squire of the Shires, if the, this part of the Cockerell's Coop, or part of it could be to give you some feedback on a business idea. This might be that. Uh, these are our incubating interests. Frutas Foresta Fazenda, a plant, herb and seed nursery. And that, is that what you intend to start up here in Portugal? Because um, I imagine that will bring with it some interesting challenges. If you want to start a nursery, you might have to deal with a, an agriculture department or something like that. Raquel, I'm sure. Yeah, we'll have yeah, on that. Yeah, and yeah. gems to treasure, gifts for those special people. That's something that people might not necessarily understand here, Raquel, is when you start a business, you have to register to trade doing that particular thing. You can't, oh, it can't yeah. just be a free-for-all, can it, here in Portugal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, you have special commercial activity codes that you have to choose and define for your activity. And you can have multiple very different commercial codes, but you have to define them. And you can't go outside of that scope of registered commercial activity codes. That's right. true. That's a good yes. point. Okay, so there you go. A couple of ideas. Tell us more, Squire of the Shires. A fruta forest de fazenda and gems to treasure. We'd like to hear more about those, if you will. Uh, your name has come in, and it is a matter of public record, so I think I can uh, read it out, if that's all right with you, Raquel. Sure. In Iceland, if only you'd known this last week, you could have rocked up and just announced yourself as I am Raquel Christina Dortier, Hinrik Dortier. Would you like a free certificate? How about that? Yes, well, please. Yes, yes, yes. Would you like a certificate? Uh, and your children, it proves to be a loving confirmation sometimes to mm. kids and new siblings. The, the certificate, they are firmly both parents' children. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for that. So I say yes, it's a big yes um, from uh, Raquel there. Um, anything you'd like, to, any businesses you'd like to recommend that you're dealing with or actually in your locality in Kashkaish there, Raquel? Uh, uh, I would like to get, I, I, I'm, I, I don't know if they're even watching this or not, but uh, I've registered uh, very recently um, 
a business called The Saudade Life for uh, two clients of mine. And it's, I think it's a great name. I think uh, it's a great homage to the Portuguese soul. I think it was a great idea for them to use the, you know, they had previously uh, this name on the, on Instagram and you can look them up and all of that. I've seen them on YouTube. Uh, I think Is, they, they oh did have my, a YouTube channel, didn't it, they? It, like. It's Nicole and Dwayne Barrett. Uh, and again, here I am speaking about them without, I, I don't think even them knowing, but they're a great couple. Um, and I was very proud to be part of this process and especially because of the, of the name, specifically the name, um, I am registering also some some uh, another um, company very dear for uh, to my heart for two for a couple uh, 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 two young people a couple that are, are going to do some agriculture thing and some permaculture thing so that's also very dear to my heart and then another one another client of mine which I love who, who's going to manage like uh, offices spaces and co-working spaces and all that so it's been a very busy uh, month, and not not only that, but my that client of the music business we've just incorporated her company as well. So it's like bubbling, uh, yeah, and uh, as you can see, energy. completely yeah. different businesses. Uh, you know, in a month, uh, completely different businesses altogether. So, so it, it's uh, what great I'm taking from that is that people are getting the message that it's important to register. And yes. constitute is that the right word before yeah, before yeah. you get too far into things yeah, um, yeah which is a lesson i've had to learn the hard way and i've been grateful to you for your help <laughs> on, on this matter uh but getting the structure and the registration is quite important early yeah. on um yeah. i know in, in where i'm from in the uk a lot of people just start a kind of hobby business and then eventually they might register it and you know declare their taxes it's quite laid back i don't know if it's still like that in the uk i don't know if, it's, if that's a similar story in the us but if you go too far um without registration and structure here in portugal you can get yourself into some trouble right yeah yeah and it's uh it also has to do with the expectation if you do if you do have confidence that you are going to do a good job and if you do believe in your business then get it get a structure ready so don't do, don't just dream it don't just half ass it sorry excuse my french but actually believe in yourself and give it the proper structure to grow otherwise you're self sabotaging uh, if you're not giving it the proper conditions to grow so yes. put your money where your mouth is and and believe in yourself and take that first step i think it's very important wonderful okay we've got um we'll have uh jackie joining us soon from expats portugal and uh, with the forthcoming attractions with the webinar tomorrow evening and other things that are going on over expats portugal um and i think probably at that point we'll say goodbye to you because i guess you've got to go off and catch up um, well. with all the work you didn't manage to do while you were in Iceland last week. So <laughs> plenty to do by the sound of it. And th th do you think there's something in the air as well? It's spring is here. And, yeah. you know, uh, Portuguese people are taking off a few layers, aren't they? They're taking off their puffer jackets. Oh, my God. After and their Iceland, hats. it's hot like hell here after Iceland, you know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but right. it is. It is. It's. Uh, I love this kind of weather. When it starts to be like this after the winter, I'm just energetic. I okay. love it. All right, so definitely some springtime vibes. Uh, sap is rising, creativity, all sorts of wonderful things are happening for human beings at this time of year. What I haven't asked you about, and because uh, I haven't seen you since uh, the election, uh, what, how are you seeing the result in terms of how, how it is for... I mean, we don't have to go into, into some of the... mess. The, the, <laughs> okay. I, I think people are, are, are up to speed on that now. But what are you hearing around the news for the business community and for people starting and running businesses in Portugal? How's it looking for those people? To be honest, I don't think it matters because people know right. that whatever the decision is or whatever the outcome is, there's still stability. Uh, there's still political stability. Uh, there's There's been some stupid moves, but there will th there's something that people count on is that it's stability and uh, whatever the case may be, it's not going to be that much different from what we had. So I, I don't think there it's such a, a factor anymore for businesses, actually.
Okay, all right. So um, nothing to report on that front. Uh, they've got enough on their hands by the sound of it, trying to yeah. perhaps figure out how to play nicely um, um, yeah. and without having the president banging their heads together for them. <laughs> okay, um, let's have a quick crossover with Jackie, who's really to talk to us now. The, the wonderful ladies of Kashkaish are with us on the screen this morning. Nice big round of applause for Jackie. There you go. Oh, hold on a minute. Let me just move. Oh, there we go. That's a better view there. How are you this morning, Jackie? Very, very well. I see that our other guest has a beautiful flower shirt, and I think we're okay, getting ready for spring. It. I would have worn my flower shirt if I'd known in advance. You must tell me uh, when you're planning these sorts of things in, in future. Sorry, Carl. That's okay. All right. Maybe I'm trying next. to get a better view of my shirt because we're getting ready for spring. Exactly. exactly about that definite springtime vibes i think astrologically um in, in the cat every, whichever way you look at it um we are i think spring is here basically and the weather seems to be saying so too a um, couple of thank yous before you go raquel one from squire of the shires there and my dog smells uh also there's a sort of a dog grooming business possibility there for uh, my dog smells obrigada raquel and hit that like button folks um do you have a last message for us raquel before you go off and help more business people this morning enjoy life people live it up be happy oh there she goes uh, <laughs> full of springtime vibes so we'll see you next week we'll see you at the storytellers bye. Day, raquel take care bye for Thank now you. Ciao, ciao. Bye. In Kashkash, where we're staying we're staying in Kashkash, uh yep. with uh, you of course jackie you liked my idea of the bakery crawl that I oh gosh <laughs> that was great now, yes. i actually do a bakery crawl with all my um guests when they come to town because even the best bakery doesn't have everything perfect, everything great. So yeah. every bakery has its own specialty. Excuse me, those are my dogs just coming in. I wonder here. what that was. <laughs> uh, thank you for explaining. Um, but I, I do do a, a bakery crawl. And one of the things my bakery crawl is in Sintra, there is a, a food truck. And you don't have that many food trucks here. But they do... Um, a pao de chorizo. Mm -hmm. um, it is so delicious. This particular, it's on Sundays, they have this food truck and they do a pao de chorizo that is just incredibly amazing. Um, oh my gosh, you know, I invented this. I should have it's been your on that. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a great uh, idea. I think you could commercialize this. Here's another business. But you're recommending other businesses like the um, the Palcorn Chorizo Baker, which is, I mean, it's hot bread with a sausage inside, isn't it, basically, or a Portuguese a sausage. And it could be done not great. Yeah, but true. It, yes. But yeah. I guess it's a brick oven. I don't know how because they're coming out hot from mm -hmm. a food truck. And the lines are like, I don't know, 20 people deep. No, I can't just this. imagining it now. Yeah, I, I think a, a cold beer, kind of hair of the dog style this morning with a pal con chorizo would be absolutely perfect. Might have to do that after the show um, this morning. I'm um, talking of great businesses. Of course, Expats Portugal has the business directory. And um, over the last few years, a, a fabulous team, a curated team of professionals helping people move to Portugal has been uh, formed over there. You're here to tell us about uh, what's going on uh, tomorrow night and who from that team um, is presenting tomorrow evening for the webinar. Who have we got tomorrow night, Jackie? Well, actually, tonight we have something going on as well. We have, I believe, Holburn's coming up again. And they are great at, especially with expats, um, the money situation could be kind of tough, especially for retirees. But they have lots of investments and lots of ways, even to still get your golden visa, different ways to think about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they do a great job with assets. So they're going to be on tonight. Um, tomorrow night is about mortgages. And that is a very, um, kind of could be a slippery slope if you don't know what you're doing, getting into yeah. it. Um, and it's also interesting, historically, what people have done in Portugal was they've gotten these uh, loans. Um, what are the loans? It's not a fixed rate, but a variable rate. Yes. And... Well, if you got a variable rate four years ago, you're not doing that great today mm -hmm. because rates have gone up. So they're really going to, I think, not only talk about how good their rates are and why, but just how to think about it as well. Yeah, and that's market. Vera, isn't it? Vera, Vera from Mortgage mm -hmm. Direct, um, and they've got a lot of experience of, of uh, finding finance for people on the Iberian yeah. Peninsula. They deal with Spain as well. 
Uh, but if you're looking to uh, finance a purchase here in Portugal, you might want to talk to Vera uh, tomorrow evening at 7.30. And I think she has good news, good rates um, at the moment. The LIBOR, Eurobor, as it called, that's been going down. So they can they can get some good rates from a selection of different banks. Um, and also some good news, I think, because there were concerns often when we've had these webinars before of people getting too old to get a mortgage. And she's finding yeah. some deals on that as well, isn't she, for the older for, for the older borrower, the, 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 um, the grey borrower, if you like. Well, but I think most... The most important thing is she's going to give you this information, but to educate uh, new buyers, especially yeah. in, in Portugal, because that's what's most important. You're not going to appreciate her information unless you really understand the market and what's going on here. And I think um, they do a very good job of explaining it. And then after that, kind of explaining why the advantage of using them. Mm -hmm. So it's I, I, I think it's going to be a good one. Excellent. All right. So that's um, mortgages in Portugal tomorrow night at 7.30. Dream Team at 9. Yeah. Uh, we're loving the cultural question, aren't we, that comes up at the end of a session um, on at 9 o'clock. So we, we do we process loads of questions about moving to Portugal at 9 o'clock uh, on the Dream Team session with, with a number of the, pro, the pros from the business directory. Mm -hmm. And then I, what I like to do at the end of the, of the session is to ask a cultural question so people can find out a little bit more about the language and the culture of Portugal. <laughs> And we had a great question last week about what to, was it what to buy a Portuguese, if you're coming from, oh yes, because this is all to do with the conversation about fluffer nutters and um, the pe the things people like to have brought to them. From I the have a fluffer nutter right now in my pantry. Was that inspired by the conversation we were having? Oh, I always have it. Oh, okay, no, <laughs> never go anywhere without it. Um, and we found out, of course, that um, Gilda, if anyone's coming from the United States, what she would like is a bottle of gin, not necessarily American gin, but any gin. Um, and, and I thought that was a, a, a fascinating question, the sort of thing people, the sort of things people want brought over for them when they've been here for a little while. So what else might you want, um, Jackie? Or to look at it another way, if a shop, if a business were to start up importing American favourites, um, here in Kashkaish or Lisbon or, or or somewhere else in the country, what else do we need on the shelves apart from jars of fluff? I will tell you. Um, when I first moved here, I'm going to disappoint you with my answer. I think when I first moved here, I doubt it. Uh, somebody said to me, he goes, "Your a good friend said you're never going to miss anything from the states, like in ter in terms of food or culture when you're here." I said, why is that? He goes, because you'll find a better replacement. Right. And and except for fluff. Exactly. I, think I can't think of a Portuguese equivalent for liquid marshmallow. <laughs> can you? No, but I will honestly tell you that um, there we were even at the Liberty store in Lisbon, which sells all American products two days as, ago. As the name might Just, suggest. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it depends, right? It's a... But anyway, so we were there and I'm walking through, you know, the store looking at all the products and all I could think of is, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> I what, didn't, there give, us, give us some examples then. What, what have they got in there? They had Pop-Tarts. Oh, Ugh. yeah. I mean, come on. We have beautiful bakeries here. Those are yes, like cardboard. Okay, so they're not going to fly. Um, okay. Um, they, they had... Um, a lot of stuff you find, like Pringles, but Pringles are dehydrated Pringles. potato chips. Yes. Um, they had Lucky Charms cereal. Okay. Oh, Lucky okay. Charms. Oh, yes. yes. I won't lie. That's, I do have a soft spot for those Lucky Charms. That's that, and they've um, that's got the leprechaun on the box, if I remember. Yes, right. yes, yes. Um, I could not. They had the American chocolate. But even the American chocolate, like a Kit Kat bar. Do you, here, when you say the American chocolate, is that a specific thing, or you mean just generally the genre just of generally American? Generally, like her Hershey's or American. Some things are made, I believe, in the EU. I could maybe your audience could tell me. Yeah. But um, I see that everywhere. Uh, I I could not. Why would I want a can of American Coke? With high fructose, when I could get it here with cane sugar, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't think of one thing. 
I don't know. Yeah, you might want to get diabetes quicker. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but you might have to help me with some of these. Uh, they, there are requests coming in. I think we have a business idea here. Something has been born on the on the cockerel's coop right here this morning. Um, uh, before we go there, um, just another reminder that um, of Figo Preto, that's the central Portugal meetup that's happening this Saturday. That'll be fun, uh, I'm sure, with Suze. And Antonio is telling us that uh, Midoish, where that's happening. And that's Tabo. I, Tabo was one of the first places I went to in Portugal, is over a thousand years old as a settlement. Lovely part of the country. Um, and I'm sure you'll have a great time uh, at Ofigo Preto. You need to book directly with the restaurant there if you want to uh, reserve a lunch in Midoish. Didn't realize wow. it was so close to Tabo there. Okay, Tapacio, is that right? Or Tapatio? What, what am I talking about or looking at there on the screen from Erica K? Do you, do you not recognize that? Tapacio? I, I don't. To Pacho, yeah. you see. Okay. Uh, somebody. Tapatio. <laughs> Am I... <laughs> it's Mexican hot sauce. I'm hearing it in Oh, they. Oh, yeah. Tapatio. Tapatio. Yeah. Obviously, you're not missing that, Jackie. No, no. Actually, I have tangine. The tangine is also in my pantry. Okay. And that's the. Um, Right, Jackie's pantry, obviously. Okay, <laughs> um, tapatio, then not tapatio. Yeah, I never like tapatio, though, so I don't miss it. You're not having it, then. Okay, fair enough. Um, if anyone is going to, if anyone's going or coming, I guess a box of Lenny and Larry's protein cookies that's a very niche, or, or okay. niche, Americans would say a niche item, isn't it? Oh, Laurie seasoned salt. I will not lie. I have my kids bring that to me. This is a new thing to me, um, seasoned salt. I mean, this is salt with added heat or or, or uh, spices, isn't it? This is a new thing to me because I have my own suppliers of goods coming in from the United States from time to time. And seasoning, seasoning or seasoned salt is something that is new to me that I am enjoying and the whole of the family is. Is this the same company that we're talking about here? Lenny and Larry, they do a whole range of things. Today. No, no, it's different. Um, oh, so this complicated. is Laurie's. Laurie's is a brand that's been around forever. And what's very, um, they do something in the States called seasoned fries, where they just put Laurie's instead of plain salt on yes. your French fries. And it's oh, so delicious. It sounds so simple, <laughs> but clearly so effective as well. However, this is different. We're talking about Lenny and Larry's protein cookies for touring cyclists would be wonderful. And the other business option here is to create a Portuguese equivalent, which I guess can be a little bit um, challenging. You know, people will say, never, never will you be able to emulate a Heinz bean, for example. But, you know, you might be able to riff on the theme. You know, a fan of the beans, of the baked beans. I love beans, but I make them from scratch, so I don't. I don't do the You're cans. one of those people, a bit like Owen, <laughs> right? Okay. Um, I find it amazing. We can get crumpets, bovril, bisto, birds, custard, all at my local shop. Have you? How how many of those have you tried? These are quite British things, and I bought some marmite. I have to say, yesterday as a special present for Mrs. M. Um, do you? Are you familiar with the crumpet? As it, oh, as it? we have the GB store in Cascais. So, oh, the so, great all of store. These yeah. so I go there all the time and they have the Wharton's crumpets, which are excellent. Well, Warburton's, they, is it? Warburton's, Warburton's that's yeah. it. Right. And they're excellent. Um, but they have all the British products. So I go there all the time. I, yes. I, I can honestly tell you, okay, maybe two things I could think of, but nothing is missing. You come here, there's nothing missing. No, it's true. Not and need, it's, it's not like the, the age of Phileas Fogg, is it, where people need to worry about them. I think you can get pretty much anything, for anything. better or for worse. And as I'm looking at that list of things there, crumpets, bovril, bisto, birds, custard, I'm thinking, you know, there are times when we can thank the Lord that these things are so full of preservatives that they will last for 300 years because they, they find their way into Portugal. Um, so you like the crumpet. Have you tried the, have you tried the bovril? Did you like that? I haven't tried that, but that brings up an interesting point. Somebody sent me a map of the EU, and the map listed countries that consume the least to the most processed foods. And you know that Portugal consumes the least amount of processed foods in the EU. Very at 10, good. Yeah, at at ten, I think percent of the diet. Yeah. The next is Italy, I think at thirteen, and I think it's Spain at twenty percent. I wonder so I who, that was, the, is it the EU or Europe? What, what are we talking? Um, so, I think the whole of Europe. 
I, okay. I, I have to look at this map again. I could send it to you. Oh, well and, done, Portugal. Well done, Portugal. Yeah, well, they just don't eat that way. And right. think about how much healthier and how much better that is for your longevity. Not to eat some of the crap we're talking about. Exactly. And, and yes, here we are um, bucking that trend and finding a way of ruining those figures for Portugal here as we talk about more about these terrible things that we uh, crave from time to time. American sweets, says Jackie the Humble Crafter. Although in UK a fan of the American sweets, you cannot beat the payday bar. It's peanut heaven. Do you know the payday bar, Jackie? Yeah, yeah. I don't love it either. I mean... <laughs> Okay. I'm sorry if you fluff disappointment. All. What if you smear fluff all over it? <laughs> that can make anything delicious. Right. So, <laughs> but, that can make anything delicious. <laughs> but but okay. all these other things, That's honestly, right. I mean, you could get a Reese's peanut butter cup. I, I prefer that. You could even get a crunchy Reese's peanut butter I cup. I don't get I have thing. tried that. I'm not, I don't really understand what's going on with that. Um, is there a porch? You are, you suddenly, it turns out suddenly, Jackie, you are our translator of these things. Um, is there a Portuguese version of Doritos? We get no, Doritos. but okay, I'm not going to lie. I do miss American Cheetos because they, they have all the chemicals them. and all the gross, terrible things they won't allow in the EU. Yeah, and sometimes okay. so that's what we're looking for with added preservatives and flavorings and uh, chemicals and, I, and food coloring and all the things that are horrible. And if I may be a little bit indelicate, I mean, the, the level of flavoring you're talking about is you belch 27 days later and you can taste <laughs> Doritos or Cheetos. This is the level of, of flavoring you're talking about, isn't it? Yeah, but they're like probably, yeah, I, I'm guessing that they also have a, a lot of, I could be wrong, but modest sodium right. glutamate, which makes the tongue very sensitive to flavor yeah. but i don't know now you're talking so, okay great all of these wonderful things portugal <laughs> that we that we want to share with you uh thanks for reminding us jackie off to the bakery in a bit to get bread um they sell nowhere else from an 80 year old granny excellent shout out for that particular shop have we got have we got a shop um name there for the alvo who makes uh the pal d'alvo there okay what else have we got um there if they're from california it wouldn't be fluff. I, I think maybe not something that's known so much there. Uh, tapa, tapatio, which is tapatio the Mexican sure. sauce. Okay. Uh, by Randy uh, is here. Good morning to you, mate. Uh, Ala bon dia, Malta. Another fantastic walk through the glorious country. I haven't had a video from you for a little while, by Randy. Uh, maybe you're too much in the moment there with all this talk about meditation as we start the show uh, with messages from James of a mindful nature. I already know when I move, I'll have a two-year or two supply of various spices and chilies. So that's the message, isn't it? Is bring certain spices and chilies or combinations thereof uh, that you might not be able to get. Because I guess it only takes um, one missing spice or a chili of, of a certain kind to ruin a recipe that you're used to. Lorries, uh, that's the brand name you're talking about, right? Yes. Okay. I think it has a Y in it, though, but I could be wrong. Okay, all right, fair enough. And that's JP in Porto there. As soon as I tune in, then you mention my name. How strange. Nothing strange at all about it. I have these psychic abilities. Owen, good to see you uh, here this morning. We went to the British food shop in Coimbra, but ended up not buying, fancying any of it, uh, other than my son who bought two cans of Dr. Pepper. That is the work of the devil in a can, I think. Um, great Cheetos. So I'm not impressed. By hand, he's been here long enough to have weaned himself off those great British favourites. The In-N-Out Burger, is that a filthy euphemism or is that actually food that he's talking about? Okay, I'm not going to lie about this. Okay, people, you're bringing out all my weaknesses. We I are. Trying... You're on purpose, okay, I but do... clearly that is what's going on here this morning. <laughs> okay, In-N-Out Burger. I lived in California for 15, 20 years, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, oh my gosh, uh, my first pregnancy, I must have eaten that like five times a week. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> They're so delicious. It sounds like that's what a pregnancy is a result of an in and out burger, though. <laughs> I mean, they are, I have to say, they're only in California. You can't get them anyplace else in the country, and they're family owned. They're not like everybody wants to buy, like, um, you know, McDonald's. What's pizza? going on here? In and out, love in and out burger. It's the best. It's in like and out crazy. is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can't buy a franchise. It's only family owned. Is that so, right? Okay. And it's only, in Cal I think, California only. But you, And the first thing you do when you go to California is get an In-N-Out burger. 
Is that right? So what's so special about it? Is it, is it a sort of great a traditional American burger, you know, quite plain and simple, but delicious? It's inexpensive. Yeah. The, they don't freeze the meat. The potatoes are fresh. And I'm going to do a commercial for In-N-Out. Yeah, you are. And go. they have um, like the Monster, I think, burger, where they put this special sauce, but really it's just probably relish, uh, mayo, and ketchup, but it's so delicious. And right. then they... Um, and then there's things that are off the menu for people in the know. So I think you could get like monster fries with all this crap. And they have the best vanilla milkshakes, great chocolate ones too. So the milkshakes are real. I mean, the food is real. It's inexpensive and it's fast. And I don't know. Now I'm really feeling bad that I really love it. <laughs> I miss it. So you must have <laughs> I think there's, there's a kind of curve of, um, of this, you know, the experience of this where it's like, I shan't be missing anything from the home country. I'm moving to Portugal. I'll be to I'm trying to be so snobby. And now you're right. here. Yes, I don't intend to eat. I'll, put, I'll be putting it behind me along yes. with the old culture and I'll be embracing <laughs> Portuguese culture fully. Uh, you won't yeah. be able to get um, a Reese's peanut cup anywhere near me or an In N Out burger. And then yeah. it's like a year later, two years later, it's like, oh my God, I'm thinking I'm going to fly home and just to get an In N Out burger. Right. It's crazy. Yes, and a lot of love for the In and Out Burger, and a lot of love for Owen. Bon dia, Owen, from uh, Antonio from Nubianet, and Sarah this morning for you, Owen, who's a bit of a grumpy bunny, it has to be said. Uh, fast food nonsense. He's not happy at all about. So maybe the next the next time you're on, Owen, you can cook up some burgers as they should be cooked um, in the home kitchen. I'm still waiting to try OFC, says Sue's Owen's fried chicken, uh, but uh, his chocolate was heaven there. And in and out is run by Mormons, apparently, says uh, by Randy oh, wow. as well. Always fresh. Look at this. A jet, we're really um, causing <laughs> some uh, serious nostalgia. <laughs> like the uh, reverse Soldad here for JP. In and out is amazing. I lived in California for almost 40 years. Always in and out burger. Always. Um, granddaughter of her grandmother inherited the whole business a while back. A billionaire. Always fresh. Hot. Shakes so special, amazing onions. It's like a poem. Oh, the so. onions are so good. They're grilled. <laughs> there, there you go. Um, a traditional recipe that they're holding on to there and delighting people with. She also races cars. Um, wow. does does the um granddaughter there, the heiress of In and Out Burgers. Anything we're into our last few minutes now. So anything else you want to add about this or any shout outs? Let's get let's get back to Portugal, shall we? Any shout outs for must go to businesses, places. Preferably independent in Kashkai's Jackie. Okay, so I have a very short. I have a list, but um, oh, come right. on, you think you. <laughs> okay, so if you get a chance to come, I need my glasses for this to Portugal. I would recommend certain dishes at certain restaurants. Okay. So for Peruvian, they make this Peruvian restaurant makes this amazing duck and rice. Not Portuguese duck and rice, but Peruvian okay. duck and rice, and it's called Miski M I S K I, and it's very close to the yellow street in um, Portugal. I mean, in Cascais. Um, I would also say if you get a chance to go to Sintra, this is definitely off the beaten path. It's off a major thoroughfare. There are lines down the street that it, you look like these people, it looks like these people are about to be killed by, by trucks. And this is in Sintra and it's a, Restaurant called Cabra Macho. Hold on a minute. Cabra well, the street is so dangerous, but it's worth it. You, okay. you risk your, your life. life you you okay. can actually be risking your life if you're not yeah. careful. Like you okay. have to be against the wall so you don't get hit. But right. you'll Sounds see terrible. a line. It's amazing. And I, and I mean no disrespect, but this is how I, I understand it. It is Portuguese peasant food done at its finest. And it's very inexpensive. You see many, many locals there. I mean, all a lot of people who work locally go there. Um, but it's you have always to, a good sign. Gra I call it grandma food. It's grandma food, right? Absolutely. It's yeah. and it's incredible. Or a hole um, in the wall. So where are we talking about again? Could you just remind us of this Sintra, very dangerous in, in Sintra? In Sintra. Yeah. Yeah. And it's called Cabra Goat, like yeah. macho goat. Yeah. Um, I would also always recommend. One of my favorite, there's tons of um, Japanese sushi okay. in Kishkais. Yeah. But there's one place that ha does it beautifully, inexpensively. 
Um, I'm almost afraid to tell people because it's so good. It's a relatively new restaurant, and I'm sure it's going to catch on, but it's called Yukai. Now, why? There's a lot of restaurants that sound that have the same name, close to the same name, but this is Y U K A I. Okay. And if you want to download the app, The Fork, um, oh, yes, okay, 30% off. I mean, I I could use the fork every time, but I often feel guilty because I go there so much. So I only use it once in a while. <laughs> it's a lot of business, but go in there. With all your but business. it is yes. the most innovative, creative sushi I've had in Portugal. Wow, that's quite the accolade. Okay, and good value, especially with a fork discount there. So, and that's K I K A I in Kashkais. It's Y like yes. you, yeah, like um, your <laughs> Y U K A I. Oh, I see. How do we pronounce that then? How would you say it? Yukai. Yukai. I don't know. I could okay. be All right. Very good. Y Yukai in Kashkais there. Excellent. Thank you for sharing these with us this morning, Jackie. Yeah. Come to Kashkais. Enjoy these. Not everything has to be super pricey when you come here. No, that's true. That is what people fear sometimes going into the um, the cosmopolitan Kashkais. But there are bargains to be had and some very special experiences and just up the road in Sintra as well. Thank you so much for being here this morning. We'll see you tomorrow My evening, pleasure. of course, for the webinar and the Dream Team. Nice to hang out with you and talk about um, American food. You know, I did get Doritos, says Nubinet, while in Portugal out of curiosity. It was less flavoured. It still had MSG. Thank goodness for that. Oh, yeah, but it lacks some of the dextrin and crap. So thank you very oh, much. Man. And you know what, as well, if you open your suitcase, uh, if you're stopped coming into the Lisbon airport, apparently, and they discover wow. your 40 jars of fluff in there, don't forget about potential taxes if you get stopped at the airport. Well, even wow. for personal use, even if you're not starting a business. But that's a good point, JP. Thank you very wow. much. Um, and wow. for the meetup on Saturday, anyone who hasn't met me in person, say hi. I will be wearing my Iceland white hoodie, says Suze. And oh, and flying the flag for cooking from scratch and, and uh, being proper Portuguese about it with no preservatives and all that other nonsense in there. Crap, as Nubinet puts it. Burgers, fried chicken, tacos, all from scratch with Owen. We'll see more of that on the screen soon, I hope. Ma, uh, from uh, Nubinet to you, Owen, uh, this place isn't ultra processed. The food doesn't have preservatives. Oh, I think that's the In N Out burger. That is the good thing about In N Out. In and out, they're also a good employer. Well, that's nice to hear about um, there. So keep up these recommendations for the um, cockerels coop, preferably here in Portugal. And how would that be if they decided to open up an In and Out Burger concession uh, franchise here in? Um, I know you said they don't do franchises specifically, but that would be quite amazing, wouldn't it, to have an In and Out uh, here in Portugal or an In and Out pop up at least? Thank you, Jackie. We're going to finish with a couple of minutes of walking in the Bahada countryside. Thanks to Andy who prompted. Um, I prompted him uh, with my request for a little bit of uh, fresh air with him. We'll do that now. And we'll see you at the meetup if you're coming uh, at Palmera here in San Martino at one o'clock. Jackie, I'll see you tomorrow evening. Take care. Bye for now. Good ciao, ciao. Bye. Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao. Right. Ciao for now with Jackie there. And yes, that walk in the Bayrada countryside with Bayrandi. Don't forget, of course, lots of wonderful experiences to be had on the Gumper map uh, to be discovered uh, where um, Andy shares such things. And there'll be a few mom and pop businesses there as well. So keep up that good work. If you can, uh, do pop over to the Gumper map yourself, which you'll find on goodmorningportugal.com and add the sort of experiences that we were talking today about on the Cockerels Coop. Um, fresh air, as I promised, uh, from Bayrandi now. A little walk in the countryside and we'll see you again tomorrow morning. Take care. Have a great day and bye for now. On the air, good morning. On another different path again today in the woods. Oh, it's a bit damp underfoot round here. Really retains the water, this clay soil. I mean, it hasn't rained for weeks and yet uh, it's still a bit of puddle dodging. It's starting to close in a bit here. So it's very nice, mild, not so misty this morning.
they are going to keep on and they keep on trucking on see you later ciao ciao bye